Hello there. Do you remember the Horn of Geddon? And do you remember the didgeridoo? Don't. How about an Ilophone? <laughs> Okay, so this bush in my garden, or this tree I should say, is a corkscrew hazel. And through a little genetic uh, defect, it means that all the branches go all squiggly like this. Now I have to prune it back every year, and this year I got this most amazing shape. I mean, look at this. I particularly like this knotty bit in the middle. Um, yeah, it's the most extraordinary piece of wood. And I thought, I've got to use that in a musical instrument somehow. It just made me think of those really complicated um, trumpets and, and other blown instruments that have these really tangled up pipes. There was also something a little bit Dr. Seuss about it as well in the shape of it. So I needed a horn to go on the end. So I got myself the lid of a, I think it was an iced coffee from a coffee shop. Uh, it was the lid of one of those and I put a horn on the top, which is which came from one of these little party favour saxophone toys. Then I got a plant watering bulb, one of those things that you use to water your plants when you're on holiday, and it fitted perfectly. Voila, I've got the main part of the horn. What I then had to do was weave it in amongst the tangly bits of wood. Do you see what I mean about the Dr. Seuss shape? It's got that kind of look to it, and I kind of liked it. So what I did then was I added a second bulb. I burnt a hole in the first one and fused the two together. So that now what you've got is two bulbs, which uh, look as if they're connected to all these pipes. Uh, and then I did some more of these party favour saxophone horns, just to make it look like there were lots of different outlets for the sound to come out, which of course there isn't, because the pipes aren't hollow. And I added a mouthpiece and a pipe going into the second bulb. And I fitted a squeaker into that mouthpiece, because I thought that would work quite well. Um, it turned out it gave quite a pathetic sound. It's a bit pathetic, it needs more squeaks. Yep, it needed more squeaks. So I added more squeaks. What I did was I got my hot glue gun and I used the heat of the nozzle to burn holes in that second bulb and then left a little bit of hot glue around the exit hole and then got dog squeakers and pushed them into the holes. And I then repeated that process with different size squeakers and did about nine of them. Then I spray painted the whole thing with a white primer. And then in keeping with the whole Dr. Seuss theme, I decided to spray it all bright gloss red with the idea that maybe I would make some of it stripy. It was more or less at this point that I realised I'd made a bit of a boo-boo. Hello, Harris. You see, if I'd wanted to put white stripes on it, what I should have done is put masking tape around some of the pipes before I sprayed the red paint, because it's a lot easier then to pull the tape off and reveal the white stripes than to try and put white stripes over red paint. Ah. <sighs> But then I thought, well, let's try something else. What about doing spots? Surely I can find some white circles of sticky paper. Um, but then I suddenly remembered these. You see, I've got hundreds of googly eyes because I do workshops at art festivals and things like that where I make monsters with kids. And I have got literally thousands of googly eyes of all different sizes. And I thought, what if I did them as spots instead and made it look like the thing's got lots of eyes? Which is freaky, but I thought, why not? Oh my god, this is going to take forever. So, here we are, the Ilo foam. With its jiggly eyes. Ugh. But how does it sound? It sounds like this. Bloody aeroplanes. It sounds like this. No, not really. 
It sounds like this. Come on, it's more musical than the last two. <laughs>